Here come the Australian openers, Matthew Elliott on the left and uh, Michael Slater on the right. Typical Slater shot will go for four. Put it away very well. The shot was catch. Well, he's gone for him. A bold gamble by Lara, met with a bold shot by Slater. And it goes all the way. Well, that's gone many a mile. Good use of the feet from Michael Slater. Good swing of the bat. That's gone straight down the ground. And straight on the top of the stand. That's a monster. And another beautiful delivery, and he's been given. So finally he's got him to drag himself forward and at the outside edge, the last ball of the over. And the man continues to marvel, Courtney Walsh. And Matthew Elliott has been vulnerable from the first ball of the first test and again he falls to that very good delivery from Walsh. This is what they've been looking for, to pitch the ball in line with the stumps and get it to go away from the left-hander. Excellent delivery again. Courtney Walsh is 412th test wicket Australia 31 for one and there and Lara's got him so Michael Slater at the end of the hour has come forward to the ball may have just left him a fraction it was quite a healthy nick and Brian Lara took his time got into position and balanced himself on the knee and Lara is in good catching form and Ambrose and Walsh are getting the wickets as per usual, both Ambrose and Walsh bowling very well this morning and of course a change of ends doing the trick. I did say earlier on that they didn't quite seem too happy getting the ball to do exactly what they wanted to do when they were bowling earlier on. Now that they have swapped ends, they are back on song. It's 36 for 2. Bowling! A very tentative shot from Mark war Ambrose has struck and the West Indies have made the breakthrough 36 for 3 well Mark Wall leads the scene fairly disappointed it's a very nonchalant shot this one did come back a long way it's caught that inside edge and straight back onto his leg stump elation there for the West Indies Kirtley Ambrose struggled in the last few tests to get an early wicket and here we see him already two wickets in this over Mark Ward departs for none, and Australia reeling at 3 for 36. Absolute beauty again. This ball is moving around both ways. Batting is very difficult out there. for him he's a very good hooker and cutter of the ball and he's played a couple today already that's probably the most authoritative of the lot and that brings up the 50 for Australia but for Australia three wickets have gone down and a beautiful delivery again that's the right length and the Australian captain is having a tough day at the office great over from Ambrose That's the Caribbean Sea on the west coast. Collins bowling around the wicket. So they pick up another with a fumble by Ambrose. <laughs> Typical Steve Waugh shot. What a way to greet the off-spinner, dipping at the knee and putting it over mid-wicket for four. Ball brings up his 50. 
So a classic shot by Steve War, and again the Australian captain comes forward when his side is in trouble. He brings up another half century. Bit of room and placed beautifully towards cover point. That'll go all the way to the fence. So Langer keeping pace with his captain. He's gone to 44, War on 53. And the 100 partnership between these two. Beautifully placed again by Langer. And that's his boundary. And good piece of fielding. Joseph does the fielding, but Langer brings up his 50. So well played by Justin Langer. He matches the half century by his captain at the other end. Carl Hooper now will come on. To Langer. Shot by Langer, for ball, Hooper strikes. Didn't take any time to look at him, and Australia have lost their fourth wicket for 144. Very disappointed with himself, Justin Langer. He'd done all the hard work, made the half century. First ball from Carl Hooper, a slightly quicker delivery. He's going back to try and cut the ball away as he's done successfully in the previous overs. Ball hurries on, hits his off stump, and that's the end of Justin Langer. Very well bowled again from Carl Hooper. Slightly quicker through the air. Justin Langer on his way for 51. Australia now 4 for 144. And there he goes again. That is called the full face of the bat meeting the ball. And yet another boundary for War. Just past second slip. Down to the boundary for four. Already went after it. Carries him to 99. What a player Steve War has been, particularly in the last four or five years, and even more so the last couple of years. And that's it. So the third man comes into play, but Steve Waugh doesn't look for two. He's more than happy to pick up his 19th test century. He now equals Mark Taylor. And that is four. So that is a medium pace ranked long off that Pony has smashed. Good shot. And there's no one out there. Leg side field is wide open and that's four. In, oh, he's dropped it. It's a no ball, but it's still got the crowd excited. Lovely shot. It's been a trade of Steve Ward today. The straight driving off both the front end, the back foot. And that's just a hard four defence. It's gone for four. That is a classic four. Down the pitch to the young off spinner. And no need for anybody to run. The part of Phil's going to go and fetch it. Oh, yours, A.B. Well, that's a very good shot from Ricky Ponting. Just slightly short of a length and quickly onto the back foot and just eases it through mid wicket for another boundary. And there it is, Ricky Ponting, a well compiled half century. Salutes his teammates and then very appreciative crowd. That's a great shot from Ricky Ponting. 
rocked back and just smashed that through mid-wicket. Pretty evenly paced pitch this. We saw Michael Holding say there was a few deviations in it. it uh, basically pretty flat. Been pretty evenly paced. Slowish when you bowl it short. When it's pitched up, it tends to do a little bit, which, as you'd expect, we didn't see too much spin for the uh, West Indians off spinners yesterday. Maybe that might change a little bit. It will obviously change as the, as the game wears on. That's a great shot. Punched it down the ground for four. No real back lift, just a typical Steve Waugh punch down the ground. Ambrose down there, they'll have time for two. So 150 for Steve Waugh. Pulled away for four. First ball from uh, Pedro Collins. Authoritative shot by Ricky Ponting. And Collins starting with a long haul. Gone straight through Ambrose for four. Absolutely straight through him. Stephen War has launched this, and that has gone right up on top of the stand. A big six to finish the over. What a great shot. Australia move on to 392 for four. And he missed that very well. Long chase around for Adrian Griffith. Makes a dive, but he doesn't uh, save it. Goes into the boundary, a good effort by Griffith. Ball always going away from him. And that raises the 400 for Australia. Single carries Steve Waugh now past Mark Taylor as the second highest uh, scorer for Australia in uh, Test cricket history. Ninety-eight to ninety-nine to a hundred. Ponting brings up his third test century, and what an important one it has been. A great partnership that he has been with his captain. He may not have realised for that fraction of a moment that he brought up the hundred, but that shows him that he has got a hundred. He kisses the crest on his jumper. And no man out of point on the fence. So well placed, too short. And that'll go to the boundary. So he celebrates his century with the boundary. And he goes in the air and back with square leg. Carl Hooper has moved to that position and taken the catch comfortably. So Ricky Ponting will be disappointed. He brought up his century, he hit a boundary. And he tried the sweep, didn't go through with the shot for some reason. It may have bounced on him and he got the top edge and an easy catch for Hooper at 45 degrees. I think he's done him in flight here. You'll find it's dropped short. And it's got the top, or maybe in the back of the bat. And Hooper there, just behind square. Simplest of catches. Uh, unfortunately for Ricky Ponning, he leaves a very fine innings, 104 and the fifth wicket down for 425. the stumps, he's given him out, first ball. It was so close it looked like it may have bowled him, but Ian Healy not offering a shot, the ball coming back, and Ian Healy is out, first ball, LBW not offering a shot. Well, I picked it in one, and I hate to put the mocker on him, but sitting around for a day after such a beginning, you often see this, Healy just shaping up, comes back a long way, and that definitely probably would have hit the top middle and off, no shot. Empire. There's no hesitation. Healy's on his way for a duck. So that's a six wicket down for 427. And a big shout and right in front of you. 199. He has been dismissed for 199. He's made 299s in Test cricket. 
and now 199 and the curse of Matt Fingal has worked again. Steve Waugh out, LBW to Perry, 199. Now this is how it happened, back he goes off the crease, does miss that delivery, he is back a long way, may have missed leg but the umpire doesn't pick that, that man on screen the white coat, Matt Fingal put the uh, knocker on him, unfortunately Steve Waugh on, on his way, a tremendous innings of 199. And hello, as we speak, that's gone a long way and that's out of the ballpark. He's hit this one high. Lara's under it at mid-wicket and safe hands. And that's the end of Shane Warne. Good reward, Perry. He's stuck to his guns. He tossed the ball in the air. Shane Warne tried to repeat the shot of the previous over. Hits it high in the air and he's out. Caught by Brian Lara in the mid-wicket area. Similar delivery to the one that he hit over the mid-wicket boundary previously. This time not getting quite as good a hold of the ball as he did before Shane Warne. Pretty much a top edge. And of course Brian Lara won't drop those simple catches. Australia lose their 8 hit. It's 4-4 for 6 for 8. Now McGill goes, he may hit a six, McGill, he has. Just so the man in the scoreboard can put the six next to McGill's name, he's hit it straight towards him. As this ball slapped him it off. Who's that? Pretty good piece of fielding and uh, we're going to the third umpire. Kirtley, a good pick up and throw, hits the stumps now, and just short of his ground. Very interesting picture this. I think the other angle, the original angle, shows that he was out of his crease when the ball hit stumps. Here comes the ball. Stumps are disturbed, the bail's in the air, and the bat is short. In my book, that's out. In anybody's book. Yeah, Stuart McGill probably thought he got back there, but that's a brilliant piece of fielding from Kirtley Ambrose. Crowd entertaining themselves at the moment. And he's out, well caught. The arm ball caught by Joseph at slip. He's got a good pair of hands. Hooper gets. The last Australian week to fall, that of Glenn McGrath, caught it slip. Very good delivery this from Carlo Paul, the arm ball, instead of spinning back into the right hand, just going straight on, Glenn McGrath looking for the ball to turn in, finds the outside head. Pretty good catch that by Joseph as well, took it quite comfortably. The Australian card, as we said, dominated by Stephen Moore, a brilliant 199. He got great support from Justin Langer, who made a good 51 when the conditions were very difficult. And a great knock from Ricky Ponting, his third century. A great uh, partnership with Stephen Moore. So the Australians finished their first innings with a formidable total of 490. Captain Steve Waugh led by example with a magnificent knock of 199. Less impressive were the West Indies bowling figures. A poor performance leaving him with an uphill battle just to save the match. Here come the West Indian batsmen. And... Huge cheer. Very attacking field from the Australians, as you'd expect with a big total. You have to hurry. That's it. I think he's gone. Well, he's not a man you take on, Ricky Ponting. It's no, a no, no especially at this stage of the, you can see the look on his face, he's pretty concerned. Ricky Ponting has hit them flush, took his time and lined the stunts up. I don't think there's any question here, even to the naked eye. Return comes in and he's out. 
Well, that is bad luck, isn't it? To, to get out in the first hour and run out has got to be the worst of the lot. Just going on a silly single, especially to one of the best fielders in the infield around the world, Ricky Ponny. So unfortunately, he's on his way for a duck. And the first wicket down for nothing. Gloria shot. Magnificently struck. And he goes for it. And it's gone to square leg at a rate of knots. Shane Warne won't be displeased with that, but that went very, very quickly. Lovely shot. May well be the cover drive of the day, which, given that Steve Wall made it 199 and Ponting 104, but that is a classic cover drive against an opening bowler. They don't come much better than this. Full and wide. Full swing of the bat. Sherwin Campbell doesn't often get onto the front foot, but that is a beauty. Right out of the meat of the bat. And four more to the total. No, Sean McGon will go all the way for four. Half volley, punched on it very early on. Didn't really go all the way through with a shot, just punched it down the ground. I'll ask Steve why, I suppose. End of the over, the 50 is up. Yeah! Let me fall. McGraw gets his man. Dave Joseph on the back foot looking for a big stroke, and the West Indies have lost their second wicket for people. Again here, not really getting his foot moving here at all, Dave Joseph. Ball pitching outside all stump, doing enough, coming back in. Dave Joseph, I would think, perhaps thought that the ball would have carried straight on for him to drive it through the offside, it didn't. West Indies lose their second wicket, it's fit for two. He's gone first ball. So he doesn't do the night watchman job this time. Out first ball and all of a sudden the West Indies are 50 for three and McGrath is on a hat trick. Much too early for Pedro Collins. Did a good job in Jamaica but it's still a long way before this. These overs are finished and that is plum. There is absolutely no doubt about that. Then McGrath getting the ball to swing. Well fit up. That would have hit over mid and midland leg. Pedro Collins the pass is 50 for three. And then McGrath on a hat trick is round the wicket to Brian Lara. Australians are off the ground and on it. On their toes now, smiles on their faces. And Lara to face the hat trick ball from Glenn McGrath. Dropping his hat, dropping the gloves out of the way, taking it on the chest, as Jeffrey Boycott would say, sometimes I've got to wear a few medals for your country. What a steer. Another short one, it'll be a big appeal for the Australians, Brian Lara walks, it's caught the glove and that's a big breakthrough for the Australians. Jason Gillespie, another short ball right on the money. Brian Lara's out. Well, Lara, that's a sensational wicket here for the Australians. Surprised here, a bit of extra lift. Bang, really surprised him. Didn't get underneath that one. It's hit those gloves and a simple catch to Healy. He didn't even stick around for the umpire's decision. Lara is on his way for eight. The West Indies four for 64. So Shane Warne to bowl the last over of the day. Yeah. 
straight away, greeted by Carl Hooper. Smashing the ball through point. Well, he didn't quite get this one out, did he? Just a bit short, a little bit wide. Spam the Tupa all the time in the world just punched that forward a point. Men out there in the cover, no chance to get that. Outside edge, and that'll run away for four. And dropped him. I think he's outside edge. Matthew Elliott flying to the, his left hand puts down the chance. Well, I think this just shows exactly what I was talking about earlier on, AB. I think Ian, I think Matthew Elliott is not really in a normal position. Steve Waugh is trying to cover two positions with one man. He's not in a third slip position, neither is he really in a gully position. He's pretty much in a fourth slip position. In the air, yeah! and Warren has taken a beauty at first slip. It looked as though it had gone past him. It was onto his left-hand side. And once again, Carl has let down his legion of fans. A beautiful boundary through backward point. And then just put the bat of the ball. And Shane Warren took a beauty. He was just uh, one of the crease there. He's just shuffled across and poked at it there. It uh, did travel fairly quick, but a double-hander there to Shane Warren. Good, simple catch. But uh, Glenn McGrath does the job again. Carl Hooper very disappointed. It was a very good boundary of the ball before, but he's on his way now for 25. Five wickets down for 98. In the air. Oh, he's taken a blow in the second slip. Like Shane Warren, the ball had gone past him. And he is so calm when the ball comes in the air towards him, Mark War. He doesn't panic, he doesn't snatch, he lets the ball come to him and he just took it like picking a bright peach off a tree. Well, this one just away from Jimmy Adams, got him coming forward, that was a hot chance as well, but he just makes it look so easy, like David said, soft hands and just wait for it to get there. And Glamourgrass pretty happy, Jimmy Adams, the other side of the coin, out for a duck and the sixth wicket down for 98. Gave himself some room and that allowed him to have a free swing with his arms at the ball, even though it was against the spin. It was just short enough to give himself time to watch it and gain the pace off the pitch. And no ball called and Jacobs heard the call. Very good shot. He heard the call early, got down and then he took the risk and succeeded by hitting a good boundary to mid-wicket. That's his 50 with a pull up and a determined 50 by Sherwin Campbell on his home ground here at Kensington Oval. Correct that away for four more. The crowd's really enjoying this now. Should get runs here. Matt's is 50. It's been a good 50 as well from Ridley Jacobs. Coming out at a time that is sided and a great deal of problems, but battling courageously. And Kenton Noble certainly applauding the efforts of Ridley Jacobs, who was the revelation on the South African tour. Oh, that's a beautiful shot by Campbell down behind Paul. That's four, and the 100 partnership as well. Cracked away by Campbell for four. He's very, very strong with that shot. Played that several times, one early off a of grass. 224 for six. Away for four. 
The crowd's loving this from Sherwin Campbell. That's it. Sherwin Campbell nudges the ball down towards third man, brings Kensington Noble alive and reaches his third test hundred, his second here on his home ground at Kensington Noble. Well, what a tremendous innings. Great applause there for the young man, the young hero, as his teammates Brian Lara and the rest of them out there. Very pleased man, as he should be. So are the rest of the crowd. Sensational innings in the uh, context of the match and the situation. He gets a hug from his fellow batsman the other end there, but Brian Lara, very appreciative of a very fine knot. Magnificent cover drive. And he's out. Ricky Pond, he's got the breakthrough. Well taken by Mark Ward. To floating slip. He's done it again. Ricky Ponting at the three king. Well, Steve Waugh is the man that usually gets these breakthroughs. But this time, Ricky Ponting has done the job. Just a little bit of movement off the scene. And Mark Ward, the man at the first of those two, got his taking the catch. Well, he broke through, and he almost broke a part of it himself as well, Ricky Ponding, but we'll have a look at that when we get back. It's 251 for seven. Oh, an absolute jaffer. Again, passing the outside edge. Kirtley, Ambrose and Walsh know all about that. leg cutter you could see the direction in which the seam was pointing when it was heading down the pitch instead of keeping the seam very upright gone in the gully so Campbell's long vigil has ended and it is fitting that Jason Gillespie should have got it a catch to gully and the West Indies have lost their eighth wicket for 265 as Steve War hangs on to the offering. And they were very good knock this from Sharon Campbell. Tried to get on top of that short ball from Jason Gillespie, but good bounce, couldn't quite get on top of it. Didn't manage to hit into the ground, and Steve War in Gully takes the catch. Very good catch, the right man getting the wicket to put there as a right man, Jason Gillespie. But an excellent knock by Sharon Campbell. The man of the moment as far as the West Indies are concerned, as far as Barbadians are concerned. West in this 265 for eight. Emrose goes for it and over the uh, top of gully, four runs on now, just eight runs away. And he goes for it, and that is a good bounty over mid on. So Perry continuing it, it's good form with bat and ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, and they've avoided the follow on the West Indies. So that will bring the applause of this very knowledgeable crowd, and they know exactly what the West Indies Tarlanders have been trying to do. It takes away one part of the equation for Steve War. He can't believe it. At one stage, 98 for six. And now 291 for eight. And Steve Wall doesn't look too pleased. Into a manage close. Umpire says out. So the in swinger did the damage. The slow ball, as Jeff Thompson said, the ball before that left the bat. Then the faster in swinger, very good delivery. And a good innings of Perry's is now finished. Well, just shuffles into line there. That ball just coming back in. There's no doubt that would have hit probably middle and off. And he's right back on the crease. No doubt in the umpire's mind. He's the one that counts. Gillespie pretty happy with his doings there. Nehemiah Perry departs for a very good 24. The ninth wicket down for 291. Walsh and Ambrose causing problems with the bat now.
He's hit that over the top of mid-off. A long chase for Ricky Ponting. He might just cut it off. And no, he doesn't. Just sneaks into the boundary. Four more to the total, and that's the West Indies 300. Chipped over the head of the bat pad. Justin Langer hobbles after it. And a chance for a run out if it's close. Glenn McGrath drops the ball. Courtney Walsh makes his ground. This was a close call. If he had gathered it, it would have been dead. By a long way. He's not even in the picture yet, Courtney Walsh. Here he comes now. And the ball almost bounced out of his hands and then onto the stumps. He knows he's struggling, Courtney Walsh. He has made it, but I think he realized that was a mistake. That call wasn't really on. Well, that one help his demeanor. That is a beautiful shot. Classic on drive. And he's got away with it. I'm not sure whether that's caught the inside edge, but it's going to run away to the boundary. Signal just buys. Higher wider. Michael Slater getting under it, and he's out. Shane Warne gets Courtney Walsh in the deep, and that's the end of the innings. West Indies 329 all out. Well, finally, the Australians say Michael Slater running off to get himself padded. Courtney was looking for that big hike over the long off region. The bat pretty much slicing across the ball instead of going right through the line of the ball. Not getting as much power as he would have liked, not carrying as far as he would have liked. Michael Slater taking the catch. So the West Indies all out for 329. But that's a good score considering that they were 98 for six. Very good knock by Sherwin Campbell, of course. He and Ridley Jacobs were the main men for the West Indies batting. 105, third centre for Sherwin Campbell, Ridley Jacobs 68. The West Indies had to thank Sherman Campbell and Ridley Jacobs for dragging them out of trouble. And there was also a useful contribution from Kirtley Ambrose. But they still finished the innings 161 runs behind the Australians. So Courtney Walsh having uh, starred with a bat a while ago, now comes out to open the bowling for the West Indies. Just eight overs to go, four each before them. A lead of 161 for Australia, still a formidable lead. A gone. Matthew Elliott fails again, caught behind, as he has been so often on this tour. And Courtney Wall strikes, and the crowd's alive. Well, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Matthew Elliott is in a shocker at the moment. And Courtney Walsh is uh, walking forward on the front foot. And Matthew Elliott obliges, just, just a little outswinger, a little feather on that. Simplest to catch is there through to the keeper. Elliott's on his way for a duck, and the first wicket down for zero. Again, superb bowling by Courtney Walsh. We've seen really outstanding fast bowling in this match from Walsh and Ambrose and from McGrath and Gillespie. Typical Slater shot. He really gets down when he it just bends the, the right knee and put it away really well. Yes, it wasn't too bad a delivery. It wasn't the shortest. It was in a good zone there. And he's just picked it up so well and swatted that away. Doesn't bother to keep it down. There's no man out there. There's just one man at deep fine leg. He's straight off the meat of the bat. Already he's on 10. And that scores and that's out. So Kirby Ambrose picks up the second wicket with Justin Langer, LBW on the back foot. Australia 12 for 2. 
Well, this is how it happened. LBW Lear goes back and across, and this is what I'm talking about. He goes a long way. This one holding the line. Hit him a little bit high, but he's way, way back. Umpire says, on your way. So does Kurt the Ambrose. Just a leg gone for one. Second wicket down for 12. What a shot. Smashed away behind point. Yes! If they can bat that long for a declaration. Yeah, it's going to depend yeah, a little bit on who gone. stays in and Monsanto oh, is, is in trouble. What a peak hurting from yesterday, Centurion, Sherwin, Campbell. Slater tried to keep the strike, keep Gillespie away from it. He is quick between the wickets, but Campbell came in like a cat and threw the stumps out of the ground. And the umpire has gone for the third umpire, and Michael Slater is standing, and he is going to be watching those lights very, very closely. Well, it's a direct hit, and it's a good pick-up from Campbell. He's two-thirds of the way to the fence there. But uh, Slater, just watch this one. Well... It's a line ball decision, this one. Well, that bails up, I think. Yeah, the bails up there. Maybe Michael Slater's a little bit unfortunate there. That is a superb piece of fielding. And when you're hot, you're hot. Sherwin Campbell's the man. Did the job. Slater just trying to keep the, pri the strike may pay the price here. an absolute line ball. It's even hard enough for the replays. It did look like it was up. Well, unfortunately for Michael Slatter, he's been done by probably an inch or so. A superb piece of fielding. It had to be a direct hit. And Sherwin Campbell, the man that scored the runs yesterday for the Wendy's, has taken the wicket here this morning. Slater out for 26. And Australia 3 for 35. Nice and full aiming at the stumps with Gillespie on the back foot. A delivery that he had to go forward to, but he's been camped on that back foot. And from the pad onto the stumps. Yeah, it's just a little off cutter. The right up where you've got to get him. Kirtley Ambrose has got it right. It's just gone between the gap. And that's Kirtley Ambrose, 50th wicket here at Bridgetown. Jason Gillespie leaves the field for 14. And Australia, 4 for 46. Beautifully bowled. The men behind the bat think he's got him. Ambrose didn't. 48 for four. That's out. Again, falling across his crease. I thought he was pretty close early in the over. And falling across his crease, Mark Wall fails again. And Australia 48 for five. Yes, yeah, so a little bit casual again. The ball nipping back, catching him on the crease. And uh, about the knee line, a judge to LBW. Walsh celebrates. So Mark War is on his way. Australia in lots of trouble. 48 for five. plays one of his favourite shots, and that is a six. Well, he split the difference of those two men on the fence and right on the scoreboard. He doesn't mind going for it there, bang. There is two men out there, and that is split the difference right between them and also way over their heads. series that Collins has got the Australian captain one of his favorite shots and the bottom is cannon into the middle stump well this is how it happened it 
it did come back on him again. He's chopped it down. Extra bounce a little bit quicker, but uh, bottom edge straight on the middle stump. It's the view from behind, straight onto the leg stump, as a matter of fact. So Steve Waugh's on his way, and that is a big wicket for the West Indies. Out for 11, 6 for 73. Gone. Got behind. Collins gets his second wicket. First, wick first over after the break, and Australia 81 for 7. Well, Australia's woes continue. Ian Healy trying to force this uh, behind point. Only succeeds in getting an edge. And as another Australian wicket goes down. Well taken behind the stumps there. Ian Healy is out for three. And Australia now seven for 81. He struck that magnificently. That was not all that short. It really didn't deserve that blow through mid wicket. <laughs> Cracked away for four more. Under no ball, too, so that makes it five. Good counter attack here from Shane Warne. This is a brilliant shot from Shane Warne. Just lets the ball come to him. And that has just raced away. First the pull shot, now the cut shot. Brilliant uh, counter attack. <laughs> Over the steps, four runs. That is not a great delivery, but that is a fantastic pull shot. The middle of the bat is hitting the ball and hitting it regularly, and that's bad length bowling. And that has come back, and that is a very good delivery. Walsh still able to extract something from the pitch. 127 for seven. I think they're maybe just trying to put the mocker on their strands. Australia in a good position at the moment. Leg the ball. So finally, the partnership is ended with a ball of full length. In fact, a low full toss has done the trick. And Australia 134 for eight. The kangaroo just rises for a moment to see what has happened. Well, the team way back in front, maybe hit leg stump, full toss. He couldn't put it away. And the full bunger has done the job. Shane Warne a little bit disappointed. 32 good runs. And the eighth wicket down for 134. Well, the reason he comes around the wicket is to just cramp him for room. And this ball seems back in towards him as well. Hits him right on that inside thigh. And I can vouch. Look at those eyes. <laughs> They're getting bigger and bigger. The trouble is they didn't do him much good. It missed the bat. Hit him right on that thigh. That doesn't tickle. It's not showing any pain, but I can vouch for you that it does sting. It's in the air, and the catch to deep backward square leg like comfortably taken by Campbell. Well, I picked it in one. I told you if he got the bat on, it'd just go straight up in the air. Courtney Walsh knew that. He only had to bowl it a bit slower so he could hit it. So Stuart McGill, he's on his way. There's the delivery. There's the swipe. That angled bat just straight up in the air. Sherwin Campbell just sits there. Could have caught it in his back pocket. Stuart McGill is on his way for one. That's the ninth wicket down for 137. Just over the head of the backward square leg fielder and going for four. In the air and the catch, out to extra cover. That's the end of the innings. Five wickets for Courtney Walsh as Griffith takes the catch.
and Australia are all out for 146 and 308 the West Indies will have to get to win we'll have uh, plenty of time to finish the match and here is how Ponting scooped the catch up to Adrian Griffith an extra cover to end off the Australian innings 146 Ponting out for 22 Five wickets again for Courtney Walsh. But that uh, Australian batting card doesn't look too good. A good 32 there from Shane Warne. Ricky Potting, 22. Michael Slater, 26. Unlucky run out this morning. That started the rot. So just bowled out in 50 overs. 146, 25 extra. There's the bowling. Courtney Walsh. Look at that man. He just can't stop taking wickets. Five for 39. Kirtley Ambrose bowled very well indeed, two, two for 60. Pedro Collins, a couple of handy wickets. Perry, only just a couple of overs for Perry, but did bowl fairly well as well. Five wickets from Courtney Walsh was storing a little lost pride there for the West Indies, but they still needed a massive 308 runs to win the match. 308 runs required for the West Indies to win what would be an amazing turnaround in this match. Still. Alan Border, it's not 358 or 398, it's just 308. It's just in that teasing zone. The wicket's still playing pretty well. A little bit of movement off the seam and variation in bounce starting to appear, but all I need is one half decent partnership, particularly in the top order, and uh, anything's possible. And that's a pretty good way to start. No mid-off. First ball, four runs. So 308 um, is gettable, but it's a daunting target. And uh, only three times in their previous 350 test matches have so the West Indies managed to score over 300 to win. New Zealand uh, at Auckland, 1968-69, and Seymour Nurse was in great form and uh, made 150 odd not up, 348 for five to win that. And England Lords in 1984, Gordon Grunge's magnificent double hundred. That's a beautiful delivery again. Lovely on drive, magnificently played. Use of the wrists. No ball and caught behind. Get so he couldn't be run out. The Australian players are throwing the ball, but. What has happened is that he wasn't going for a single, so you can't be running off a no ball if you are not attempting a single. So yeah, Griffiths just panicked a little bit. Beautiful delivery, outside edge, no ball, so he just keeps walking. He knows he's hit it, and it's no ball, so... Gillespie over the line. Well, we said it had happened. And sure enough, at a very vital time, the no ball has caused a wicket to be a non-wicket. And it's right when Australia didn't need it. Outside edge, good over, but four runs again. So the total mounts, the deficit decreases. He's got this fine. Ben McGrath's coming around at fine leg. He'll pick it up just inside the boundary. And that's the West Indies 50. And that's swung away, short ball, Sherwin Campbell makes no mistake, swung away to the boundary.
Great shot. Signature shot from Sherwin Campbell. He loves the ball in that area. Very strong cut shot, and that is four more. Jim Wilde of second slip. Good bowling here by McGrath, but no luck for him, as there has been no luck for most of the fast bowlers in this match. Well, another streaky shot. This time it's an edge just past the outstretched hand of Mark Ward's second slip. Brings him forward, up it goes, and just too wide. Some more frustration there for the fast bowler McGrath. A good delivery. I saw him beat the bat earlier on with a flashy shot. This time he drew him forward. Please help me up there. Nice shot down the ground. Beautifully timed and beautifully stroked. Long chase here will go all the way for four. Very well placed shot this one. That's out. So, Glenn McGraw gets the first wicket. West Indies are 69 for one now as uh, Sherman Campbell, the century maker in the first innings, batting pretty well here. Well, it's taken a while, hasn't it? But he just shuffled right back on the stumps. There's no question about that one. You can see it was out from behind up here in our commentary box without looking at the screen. Umpire says, on your way. <laughs> Glenn McGrath pretty relieved with that. And so are the Australians. They've finally got that breakthrough. Sherwin Campbell, been there a long, long time, 33. First wicket down for 72. Hey! And Big Shot went straight on and he's out. So finally McGill has been rewarded for being able to bowl to Joseph. A batsman unable to pick the difference between the leg break and the flipper. And finally, the patience of umpire Dave Orchard was finished. And that, in fact, was the ball that slightly comes back at the batsman, stretched way down, but that ball would have carried on, hit the stumps. Umpire David Orchard says that's going on to hit the stumps. David Joseph, he's on his way for one. LBW McGill, West Indies now two for 77. a big shout by McGrath out so the use of the night watchman again has failed and Perro Collins is out for naught and that pendulum goes closer to Australia again well bowled McGrath again a big in swinger Pedro Collins caught on the crease and that would have hit middle stump halfway up the sign of doom for any batsman. Pedro Collins is on his way. Hasn't troubled the scorers again. West Indies 78 for three. Chance to run out. If he hits, he's close and he gets back. So the mix up. I didn't hear Brian Lara's call. Well, all Stuart McGill has to do is hit the stumps and he throws it far too slowly and Griffiths makes his ground. This is a definite run out chance that had been blown by the Australians. I think he may have just stumbled a little bit as he picked it. Just there. I just think he was a little bit off balance because he stumbled. Beautiful. Ryan Lara must be thinking, Glenn McGrath started this against me on this ground in 1995, and now Jason Gillespie is doing the same thing. Well, that is... Another brilliant delivery. Batsman not doing too much wrong there. Brian Lara just having a quick look back at the wicket. 
That is the mini card. Australia, 409 in their first innings, only 146. West Indies, 329, and now they find themselves in their second innings at three for 85. An interesting day in store for us tomorrow. Jason Gillespie will bowl the first delivery of this vital fifth day. Sharp for LBW, but Ian Healy a little bit messy behind the stumps. Poor leg buys the call, but Ian Healy should have stopped this. Yes, this didn't go very wide at all. Right under the gloves. And of course, that couldn't have been out LBW. The ball pitched outside leg and was coming in. Let's have a good look at that. Pitching outside leg, no chance of that being out LBW. to Jason Gillespie the ball swinging back at Adrian Griffiths a judge to LBW well we are seeing this ball move around quite a bit definitely look at this delivery pushed across the body then pitching and straightening that could have hit off stump middle and off absolutely nothing wrong with that at all dead in front and certainly would have hit halfway up the stumps that's a good delivery Adrian will hit goals it's 4 for 9 to 1 He's got this one through Carl Hooper and that'll go away to the boundary. A full toss. Got what it deserved. Four runs outside half of the bat, but a boundary. Brilliant. Brilliant. Well, that is an absolutely superb shot. Too much width there for McGrath. But with a swinging ball, this is a fair shot. Does leave him the head right over the delivery and just smashes that right through the vacant cover region. Beautiful shot, straight along the ground. Obviously one of the shots of the morning, probably one of the shots of the matches in the situation. decision Lara is unmoved at the non-strikers end but the players the Australian fieldsman went up very quickly and Healy has a victim well Carl Hooper this is a big victim here it's a wide outswinger gets his feet not quite into line nothing else there there must have been a good noise there's a big shout from the Australians anyway Hooper's on his way for six a sensational wicket for Australia five for 105 find there will be a lot of appealing for leg boards as there was yesterday with the leg spinners they'll be beating the bat coming onto the pad tell you what Tony that was very close no shot offered from Brian Lara and that's dangerous ploy I wouldn't be doing that too often not that particular delivery a little bit wider of the off stump maybe but uh, that was a close call nice use of the feet and he's got under that one and whipped it away over mid wicket for four. Well, it's the way he plays down the track and up and over. Extremely safe shot for the left hand of the ball spinning into him. I wouldn't be surprised to see Stephen Moore employ an in outfield where he has some close in catches with some protection for his spinners. Hoisted that away again. Gone for another four. Wasn't quite 
to the pitch of this one as he was to the one previously. But he dumped that onto it. Almost an identical shot. Again, good use of the feet and hitting with the spin. Very safe shot. Stephen Moore has uh, now reacted to that. And we'll see a man being placed in that area. Ricky Ponning's been placed out there just where those deliveries have been hit. And I don't know whether I agree with this. I think he should keep the bat pad. This is where Brian Lara has won the battle. Right away. After just four deliveries. Just past the bowler. A full toss. And Adams calls for the second run. Well, that was very close and, of all things, a full toss. We've had a bit of action this over. A couple of boundaries. Good shot for LBW. On this occasion, the full toss nearly hit straight back to the bowler. Very delicately played. And away from the man. So three fours in the first over and Lara is on. Very clever shot to finish off the over. Three fours and a two in the West Indies have shot up to 122 for five. Yes. And that's missed everything. Great delivery. The squeeze is between the bat and pad. How that's missed the stumps is anyone's guess. Steve Waugh continues. And he's got that away. It's gone for four. Really a long hop. And Lara puts it away. So another boundary to Brian Lara. And the West Indies move on to 133 for five as we see the pull shot. Full toss. Nicely played by Adams because of the placement. So he's broken a bit of a drought. He goes to six. And the West Indies edge closer. They are 137 for five. Half volley and gone between keeper and first slip. Ball coming all the way down to the boundary. McGill should get there and does, but they get three runs. Into the over. As we see, uh, the genuine edge, no chance for either Ian Healy or Mark War. And luck for Adams, no luck for Shane Warne. 145 for five. Use his feet, lovely placement. Beautiful placement, and the left hand is causing the leg spinner some problems yet again. Well, that's better from Jimmy Adams. More positive out there after Shane Warne. Makes this into a full toss. Very good batting, very good placement. And Paul just racing away. Congratulations there. Encouragement from his skipper. Full toss, full toss, boundary. Misfield at cover point. Adam Dale. He may in fact have dived over the ball. Well, he had to hurry, David. He smashed that one now. I just don't think he got across in time. You get a better view from here. The cross goes, he just can't reach it. So a little bit harsh on him there. A pretty ordinary delivery as a result, no matter what. Can't blame the fielder. So the game sits like that, with just two sessions remaining on the fifth and final day. The West Indies need 147 to win. Australia need five wickets. Attack the attack. Yeah. 
Long hop, and he's put that out of the ground. It's gone right on top of the Greenwich and Haynes stand. Spotted that very, very quickly and raises his 50 with a maximum. But what an unbelievable response from Brian Lara. This ball's gone miles to the top of the roof. And that is a brilliant response to uh, the attacking fielding position. Just slightly short of the length, and Brian Lara quickly onto the back foot, and that is out of there. That's well played, too. That ball spun back in a long way. It'll go all the way to the boundary. Desperate run there to get there, but another boundary from Lara has got the crowd going. This is brilliant batting from Brian Lara. He's responded to a little bit of aggression from the Australians. Just taken the bull by the horns and played his shots. And that is a beautiful late cut. Waited for the ball to come to him. Just brilliant timing. Lovely shot. Right on top of it, no third man. And with this hard ball, it's raced away for four. He's, he's in the most exquisite form, Brian Lara. Slightly shorter length. The ball did actually move back at Brian Lara, but he just let the ball come to him. This is the secret of his batting. He lets the ball come to him and then just guides it down through the slip area. And that's just raced away. Shit. Swing and a miss down the leg side. Quite close to the uh, gloves. What a death that would be. That's disdainful. Absolute disdain. Pulling a long hop through mid on. Well, this is almost ridiculous. Brian Lara knows that uh, Stephen Waugh has covered the option on, on the offside, so he decides, well, you haven't got anyone at uh, mid on. That's where I'll hit it. He's popped it on the helmet. Ducking. Which is what I'm sure a lot of people have advised him to do rather than trying to jump on the ball down. A little bit of by play between Adams, uh, between McGraw and Lara. The tension showing out in the middle as well. Adams goes down. The crowd loves it. This is what Test Cricket International Sporting Contests are all about. It's a very, very tense situation. Eddie Nichols, the umpire, being brought into it as well. And Adams, the peacemaker, coming down just to put his hand on the shoulder of his captain. The crowd's in it. McGrath back to his mark. And we're about to resume the battle. So as Lara now comes back into the strike, he'll replay, hit on the back of the helmet as he ducked, down but not out, up he gets and runs the leg by, make sure the helmet is in position, smiles, but when he gets to the opposite end, he gets to the snarling McGrath. Eyeball to eyeball. And he's pulling away for four, doesn't the crowd enjoy that? Rousing way to raise the 100 partnership. 
you could not want it better. As a battle, as a contest, here's the replay. West Indies up to 207 now for five. McGrath rubbing the ball on his flannels. He'll come into bowl to Brian Lowe. In the commentary box, David Hobson with him, Michael Holding. Thank you, Tony. And if this doesn't get the hairs on the back of your neck up, nothing will. This is outstanding, and McGrath thought about it. Lara thought about it. And McGrath thought better of it. Outstanding, tough test match cricket. Umpires involved, bowlers involved, batsmen. And everybody is on the edge of their seat. Not too sure that Brian Lara needs to do all this though. It's very competitive, but this is what Glenn McGrath wants him to do. Glenn McGrath wants him to lose his school, play all those hook shots and possibly make a mistake. He has to settle down Brian Lara. And perhaps what needs to happen now as far as the West Indies are concerned is for Jimmy Adams to take a bit of a strike. Just to allow Brian Lara a bit of time, just to settle down, forget all this tension, get back focused on the, what the job is all about and relax a bit. This is what fast bowlers do to intimidate batsmen, to get them to do, make mistakes, to get them to lose their composure and certainly Brian Lara doesn't want to do that. Test cricket this series and Glenn McGrath started it and Brian Lara wants to finish it. So Jimmy Adams will try and calm Brian Lara down as Mikey said just checking that everything's all right. 208 for five and well we don't know what was said out of the middle but I must say I Without knowing the facts on Brian Lara's side, given that he was hit in the head, I think if you hit the bloke on the arm or the elbow or the leg, so what? But McGrath's getting the support of the Australians, but he's not getting the support of the Bayesian supporters here. And got him again. Just past the bat. Brian Lara not going forward as much as he should have. Wow, well, there were lots certainly going West Indies' way at the moment. An excellent delivery again. Had to play at it, well pitched up, in line with the stumps, and then that movement taking it past the edge. And Adams pulls it out just over the head of the man at square leg Langer but four valuable, valuable runs. Well, you can see that Jimmy Adams is going in confidence. Not a bad hooker, Jimmy Adams, but he doesn't play that shot quite regularly. Seems as if he's reasonably confident now, just out of the reach of Justin Langer. A valiant attempt. Close, but got away. Look at that. Almost got it. That was a great attempt. Beautiful shot. No need to run for that. Didn't quite smash it in the middle, but he hit it well enough, and the placement was, as usual, perfect. One of fuller length, this from Jason Gillespie. Same sort of movement going across the body of Brian Lara, but a fuller length. Got to the pitch and spanked it through the offside. No need to move when you play shots like that. And a beauty again. That's the length. And that's the length that Glenn McGrath should be watching from the other end. Yes, excellent length. Same direction, same line going across the bottom of the left hander, but this time back the length that he was in the previous over. Very difficult to drive those.
That's four runs. Off the back foot, banged square on the offside. Glorious shot again from Lara. Well, he just lifts himself up on his toes to get above this ball. Bang, and punches it forward a point. No chance for the man there. Cover put straight over the top of that delivery. Absolute disdain there. Brian Lara, 94. 13 boundaries, beautiful boundaries, and a six in this inning so far. That is 100. Brian Lara hits it over the top. And the West Indies captain, the prodigal son, Turn Messiah, gets his second 100 in successive tests. And if the 213 at Sabina Park revived West Indies fortunes, this one here has transformed a match in which they seem to have absolutely no chance to get even where they are now. Well, claps of applause from everyone here at this ground. Standing ovation from the Australian crowd, the West Indian crowd, everyone from the players. A very good innings at a vital time. There's probably only a couple of men that could do this under this situation in the world. And unfortunately for the Australians, he's right here now, and he's doing the business. And not too far away from him, but struck away will go for four. He struck it pretty well, but it was in the air, and that mid-wicket was in there precisely for that. Well, quite a good shot. The crowd it is anyway. They're not worried about whether it's in the air or where it is. It's gone to the boundary, and that's the main thing. of that partnership with a beauty now the emotions have changed in the matter of a twinkling of an eye jimmy adams bowled 238 for six still 70 needed four wickets in hand very good delivery here from glenn mcgrath just going between bat and pad hits that off stump and that's what the australians are looking for they'll set up for adams they'd like lara so Adam's on his way for 38, and that's six wickets down for 238. Hooks, and it's beaten the man behind square, and that's four. Excellent from Ridley Jacobs. Two men out for the hook shot, but he's taken them on and split the gap. He's hit that very well, very good hook shot. He was inside the line and just allowed the pace of the ball to do the work. He was a bit of an oomph himself. So four valuable runs. 248 for six. 60 to win. Ah! Big shout from the Australians and he's given in. Ridley Jacobs been adjudged LBW, the Australian celebrates all around the ground. Well, Ridley Jacobs finished up outside the line. That's what he saw. But he may well have been hit, according to the umpire, while he was still in line. It's one of those where he's going across the ball. And that's where he's hit. And that's where he finished up. And he tried to bluff umpire Eddie Nichols by thrusting his pad toward, pad towards cover and here he has a look at where he was but what a blow for the australians 60 to win and the seventh wicket goes down jacob's out lbw yet another lbw to mcgrath seven for 248. has got another breakthrough. Yes! Wild scenes from the Australians. Perry out first ball. Well, a late in swinger by Glenn McGraw. What a delivery to bowl to any batsman, particularly Tarlin, and he can only consume his banks. And a big shout by the Australians and LBW, Brian Lara, the non-striker's end. 
is disappointed. But the sixth LBW, McGrath is on a hat trick, and the West Indies still need 60. Good Yorker, but well kept. So that's the tea break. The West Indies go to the break at 2.54 for eight. Brian Lara, absolutely magnificent uh, night out on 112. What a super knock this has been. He's been the man that everyone thought uh, needed to do this. The West Indies to have a hope of taking victory. They need 54 runs to win in this final session. There's one. It reduces the deficit to 49. That's a good shot. Ryan Lara initially was looking to let the short balls go, ducking as much as possible. I doubt if you'll see that happening now. Swept away and that'll go for four. Beats McGraw. 42 needed. That's just showing you the class of this man, Brian Lara. Before this deliver was bold, Steve Waugh stopped play and was very meticulous about placing Glenn McGrath at back square. He paused, kept him going another five yards to his left and Brian Lara hit it exactly where he was coming from. There'll be two here. Four. Lara doesn't get the strike, but he gets four and reduces the winning target to 34. West Indies 274 for eight. That will go for four. Little fine deflection off the left of the over. Ambrose is playing his part. The deficit now reduced to 28. from happening what a shot just slightly over pitched outside the off stump there's no one on that boundary beautifully mold past the outside edge he did it to jimmy adams numerous occasions jason gillespie and now he's done it to the number 10 ambrose well what's the money on him when he does hit it picking the gap too david as well the way this game's been going that is a beautiful ball. That's just too good. And he'll swing and a miss. The first time that Brian Lara has actually tried to play across the line. Well, those fielders came up, the, the mid-wicket man and the, and the mid-on, and he's just decided to hit him straight over the top, which we've seen before. Probably just a bit too aggressive there. The shot was on. to win they're chasing 308 for victory 
Australia made 490 and at one stage the West Indies in the first innings were 98 for six. Short ball in the head. McGrath has already had a sensational confrontation with Lara before. And the game gets him armed ahead. Lara waits for a word from McGrath. Doesn't come. Great respect between the two men. Into his 42nd over. Lara on 139 and still hit him in the head, Jeffrey. Well, that's right. It's got him in the helmet. Good bouncer from round the over. There's encouragement for the fast bowler, Ambrose. We can do this. Australian captain looks pretty calm on the outside. No point in being anything else on the outside. Short and in the air through the gap. Four runs. He thought about letting it go and he hit it waist high. Two metres from the field and the target to win is just 13. Well, again, I said it, picked it in one. What's the chance of him hitting it through the gap? But he does hit it in the air and it goes right between the gully and four slip. No third man. Thank you very much. Oh, Paul Glenn McGrath. Can't believe it. Seven runs required, two wickets. In the air, dropped! Healy's dropped it. Into his left hand and out. Lara tried to glide it past first slip. Gillespie did the work and Healy let him down. That is why we saw Shane Warne coming into that slip cordon. They know they have to get rid of Brian Lara. A very good delivery this from Gillespie. And Healy couldn't hang on. Just couldn't hang on. Excellent delivery though. Brian Lara looking to steer that down into the third man region. And this is a very, very costly mistake. Right in and right out. Well, Lara certainly won't play that shot again. That's been put straight in the cupboard. Talking to himself, he's played very, very few false shots. And you've got to feel for Ian Healy. He knows what that may mean to this test match. And he knows what it may mean for the Frank Worrell Trophy. He takes the single, leaving Ambrose four balls to face, but six only to win. If Australia wins today, the Frank Worrell Trophy is there still. If the West Indies win, then Australia needs to win in Antigua next week to retain the Frank Worrell Trophy. So the next six runs, vital for this Frank Worrell series. So now, can the Australians wrap it up? Can they get two wickets in this over? Three slips, two gullies. No man at pad. In the air! Out! Matthew has taken that third slip. And Ambrose's stellar innings has come to an end. And Lara took the risk. He gave him four balls to face. And the first ball, Ambrose has glided into the hands of Matthew Elliott and he has taken it. So Gillespie's 50th test wicket, Ambrose is disappointed. And the fortune sway again. Currently Ambrose just guiding that ball straight into the man at third slip's hands. Matthew Elliott, the catcher. We saw currently Ambrose guiding a previous delivery through before. It's 3-0-2 for nine. Well, which way will this one go? Six runs to get for the West Indies. One more for Australia. And out comes Courtney Walsh. This is not the sight that these West Indian fans were hoping for. They didn't want to see it come down this close. They were hoping that Ambrose and Lara would have carried them home. He can take the one to tie the game. He slaps it away. He slaps. Will he come back for two? No, he can't. Yes, he can. No, he won't. Scores are level. Scores are level here. And 
One ball left in the over because of the wide. So what a moment for Brian Lara and Courtney Walsh. One current captain, one former captain, both champion players in the history of the game. And scores are level. So one ball remaining. McGrath has bowled six deliveries, but one of those was a wide. Steve Waugh, knowing that only one run is required, has brought in all the fielders. No fine leg, no third man. Obviously a very attacking field. Three slips, two gullies. But instead of the fine leg, there's a man almost in a leg gully position. Forward short leg. And one ball to go. Court Walsh on strike. I certainly like to see a man in the covers. That field suggests it will be short, but I think that McGrath's got to try and get Walsh out. With no man in the covers, as soon as Walsh hits the ball, if he goes on the offside, they are going to scamper. The Frank Walsh Trophy, regardless of the result, is still alive. He lets it go. It ends the over, and Lara has the chance to bathe himself in some more thoroughly deserved glory. Just a hint of a smile there from Brian Lara. Won't allow himself to start celebrating yet, of course. It's not over until it's over. Still a run to get. What a day for Brian Lara. And they are ecstatic and why wouldn't they be? It's never over until that lady sings. And the whole crowd is on its feet. Spectacular scenes here in Barbados. And if this doesn't get your hairs on your neck up, nothing will. The West Indies crowd sense a remarkable victory. The Australians still desperate to get a tie. So what will Brian Lara do? He's now got six balls to be as calm as he likes. He doesn't have to do anything foolish. It's been one of the genuinely great test innings. He's on 149, and it would be fitting for Brian Lara to tick over that 150 mark and win this match for his country. Scores level. Three slips, two gullies, a leg slip. Finally, he's up in the leg slip position. Short mid wicket, short cover. Gillespie. Brian Lara has won the match for the West Indies. The West Indies team run right onto the oval. And one of the great results in Test match history has just been witnessed here at the Kensington Oval. So Brian Lara, Sherwin Campbell with his century. So Brian Lara finished with 153. Not out. They chased 308 for victory. He got booed onto the field 24 hours ago after sending in Pedro Collins as night watchman. And he goes from the field as a hero.